It's Friday, October the 11th, 2013. I'm Mark Chatterley, and this is episode number three of TEN, Transport Evolved News, for the week beginning October the 7th, 2013. As you may be able to tell, Nikki's not here today, so you're stuck with me. Let's see how this goes. On with the show. Tesla Model S owners may have access to their brilliant supercharger network, but let's face it, even in the US there are some minor holes that need to be filled in, and the EU rollout is really only just beginning. Wouldn't it be great then if the Model S could say use the Chadamo rapid charge stations that already exist? Well soon they'll be able to using a simple and awesome looking adapter. Costing a cool G, yes I'm speaking street, I can do that, I'm that cool. The adapter will allow Model S drivers to add about 150 miles of range per hour while charging. This is achieved thanks to the Model S's massive battery pack. The rapid charger essentially doesn't need to slow down the supply of power as it does with smaller battery cars. In Europe, we already have a fairly well-established network of CHAdeMO chargers, with companies like ABB working to install massive numbers, for example 200 in the Netherlands, ensuring everyone is within 50 kilometres of a rapid charger. The Model S really is the most versatile car when it comes to charging, with more adapted doodads and charging doohickeys than any other production car we can think of. It's essentially the Swiss army knife of charging cars, or the Leatherman of charging cars if you know your multi-tools. Announced this week are the prices for the 2014 model year Toyota Prius plug-in hybrid. Pretty soon you'll be able to get the base model plug-in Prius for two grand less and the high-end spec for just over four and a half grand less. On top of this, you'll get all the usual plug-in Prius perks like HOV lane access and state incentives. It's probably quite a good deal. The Toyota Prius plug-in hybrid is a car that splits the EV world. Some see it as the obvious next step for existing hybrid overs, while others don't really see it as an EV. I mean, come on, only 11 miles of all-electric range? And we're paying a premium for that plug socket and the bigger battery? Many are unsure about whether they should make the move to plug-in. It seems that with the price drop, Toyota are trying to make the plug-in Prius even more attractive to buyers. Will it work? Well, we'll keep an eye on it and let you know. In related news, Toyota has announced some updates to the plug-in Prius. But only in Japan. Japanese buyers will soon be able to get their hands on the plug-in Prius with new aluminium or aluminium alloy wheels, LED lip badges, and an amazing retro 80s two-tone paint job. Here at Transport Evolved, we are totally pumped and psyched about the rad paint jobs. Did, did I say that right? I did! Awesome! Following in the path of the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid, although hopefully avoiding some of the pitfalls, are two new plug-in hybrid concepts. The first is Mitsubishi Concept GC PHEV. It's a full-sized SUV with a plug-in hybrid hi drivetrain. Mitsubishi claim that in adding the hybrid drivetrain, the car will be able to achieve emissions in the range of a normal, everyday car. So if a big SUV is what you are looking for, and you really want to plug it in, this could be the car for you. And what's more, this car comes with Mitsubishi's super all-wheel control vehicle dynamic system, which, let's face it, just plain sounds amazing. The second, the Concept GC PHEV, is more compact, sitting in the crossover SUV territory. If you don't need the size of its bigger brother, this may be of interest to you. But with Mitsubishi having issues with their battery supply lines and these cars, let's face it, being concepts, probably best not to get your hopes up just yet. Ecotality's Blink network of charging stations had its bankruptcy auction this week, with Charging Car Group emerging victorious. The auction had been rife with speculation about who was going to try and snap up the network for what was sure to be a bargain price. Both Telus Power and Nissan, yes, the car manufacturer Nissan, was said to be interested, but in the end it went to Charging Car Group for $3 million. For that money, Charging Car Group has gained Ecotality's 12,500 installed electric vehicle level 2 charging stations, the 110 DC rapid charge stations, and the Blink backroom network. Let's hope that Charging Car Group can revitalise the Blink network and make it really work for EV drivers. One interesting point in all this is Nissan had loaned Ecotality one and a quarter million dollars to keep the company going. Until the auction, that is. At this point, it's unclear what's happening to that money, as it really was a loan. We'll keep you updated as we find Ecotricity, out. Ecotricity, the self-proclaimed first green electric company in the UK, has joined forces with the Volkswagen Group to offer 100% renewable energy at home to anyone buying a VW or Audi plug-in vehicle. 
Ecotricity, an energy supplier in the UK, specialises in renewable energy, specifically wind power, their turbines being a common sight across all of the UK. They have now started offering a 100% renewable energy tariff to their existing and new customers, and this deal seems to link in with that. The press release from Volkswagen Group says, Volkswagen Group will provide a 100% green electricity offer to all customers purchasing an electric vehicle from its Volkswagen and Audi brands. This includes the forthcoming e-up, the e-golf, and the Audi e-tron. Specific details of this offer are not yet available, but we imagine, or maybe that should be more like hope, it would include favourable EV charging rates. Going forward, we wonder if Ecotricity will extend this to all EV owners, or just those driving a Volkswagen or Audi. We'll have to wait and see. How much does an internal combustion engine cost you? It's not a question that many EV drivers ask, but for potential buyers of the BMW i3, it's a very important question. One that has finally been answered. If you live in the US, at least. The range extender engine for the i3 will set you back just shy of $4,000. Taking up a little cubby hole at the back of the car, the engine will effectively allow i3 drivers to double their range, or so BMW say. BMW has been a tad cagey about how the car operates in range extended mode, and what sort of power will be available, and actually how far you'll be able to go. The range extender itself is fairly small, being 650cc, and kicking out about 34 horsepower. But as we electric drivers know, those specs don't always mean much. Something we're sure about, though, is that we can't wait to find out. As of yet, though, there's still no European pricing on the BMW i3. As soon as we find out, you'll find out. This week, Dutch company Nuon has won the World Solar Challenge for the fifth time. They passed the finish line in their car, Nuna 7, and were a massive two hours ahead of the second place team from Japan. The race ran from Darwin to Adelaide in Australia, and requires that participants power their vehicles from the sun. Mostly. They are allowed to use 5 kilowatt hours of stored energy. Obviously, the cars stop racing at night, allowing the drivers and team to camp out under the stars, which is nice, maybe have a sing-song, marshmallows, that kind of thing. But this race really does show how far solar racing has come, and how brilliant this technology is becoming. The Dutch team managed to complete the 3,000 km race in just 33 hours. That's an average speed of around 91 km an hour. For US and UK viewers, that's 1,864 miles and an average speed of 56 miles per hour. I'm sure you'll agree though, regardless of whatever measurement you use, that really is amazing. I wonder, do you play Car Ninja? It's a game that I've come up with and I know a few other people play it. It's something I play when I go shopping to alleviate the massive amounts of boredom I have. It takes place when I'm trying to find a parking space, I'll drive around slowly and just see how many people I can drive past without them knowing I was even there. Very sneaky. It's much harder than you'd think. Well, two Norwegian comics have come up with a modified version of this game. They took a Kewit Buddy, a small three-seater electric car, and upgraded its horn slightly. I say slightly. They removed one that was there and retrofitted the car with a horn from a freight train. I'm not kidding. Those proper horns from freight trains. They then had great fun creeping up on people and quite frankly scaring the living hell out of them. Being well-known TV personalities helped, I think, as everyone seemed to be laughing along. Although this isn't something I'd just suggest anyone does anywhere in the world. It could have some odd consequences. The comedy duo had a minor viral hit with their YouTube video, What the Fox Say, which is my current earworm. That's got nothing to do with EVs, but it's absolutely amazing and you need to go see it. I think you should hunt out both of these videos and watch them now. I guarantee you will be laughing. You know, I fully intended that last story to be the funny, quirky, Mark is weird story to end all this on, but I really couldn't pass this up. Nikki sent me this link, and it's absolutely brilliant. Now, I live in the countryside, so seeing cows isn't that unusual for me, but I've never been overtaken by one. It seems that in Japan, this may just happen to some people. It's now possible to buy a Mitsubishi Aimi van in Japan in cow colours. These e-cows, as I'm going to call them, have a lovely white and black spotted look and come with a mirror button for when the standard horn, or indeed the freight train horn, just wouldn't do. It's absolutely brilliant. That's it for this week. 
Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEN. In the meantime, visit www.transportevolve.com for all the EV news that's fit to print. Subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube, and join us live on Sunday when we'll be discussing these stories and others on Transport Evolved. I'm Mark Chatterley, and until next time, stay juiced up! Totally stole your ending there.